Okay, Shalom, Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is Rabbi Yashar from the Milk Givers of Israel and the Seed Souls of Israel camps coming back at you one more again with part two of our segment. First off, I would like to say all praises to the Most High and Most High in Christ bless. Right, so as you can see on my screen here for part two of our segment, you know, which is the sins of idolatry within our nation, right? I want to kick things off with 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. Okay, so we're going to jump right into it. And I'm going to try to keep this one a little short. All right. So here we go. We're going to start at verse 33 here. And it reads, For God, the Most High, is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints, right? So the Most High is letting you know that he's not the God of confusion. You know, he's the one true living God of the scriptures, which is the most high. He is the most high. And he's not a confusion. Not like all of these false idols, just like in the book of Zephaniah, first chapter, right? You know, he's not a God of, of uh, Allah. He's not Buddha. He's not St. Mary. You know, he's not Amun-Ra, Osiris, Horus. You know, he's not the God of the first, the five percenters. You know, he's not a make-believe God, like in the Scientology, the Big Bang Theory, right? So all of these are different gods, man, that our people are heavy laden with, and they love to idolize and worship these other gods and follow them, right? And these are false idols, man. They're dumb idols, just as it says in the book of uh, Zephaniah, right? And they can't do anything for you. You can't call out to them. You can't, you know, pray to them. They can't help you in your time of trouble and calamity, right? So they're all false gods, man. They're all false idols, and they're all confusion in a, in a snare for our people, right? But the Most High is letting you know here in verse 33, you know, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Right? So that's what the Most High is, man. He's straightforward, you know, and he's not the God of confusion. You know, he's not going to have you calling on all of these different names, you know, and praying to all of these different deities that can't do nothing for you, right? So if you worship in him, in truth and sincerity, according to the biblical scriptures and believing in his son, Hamashiach, he's going to be there for you. You know, he's not going to leave you high and dry and leave you confounded, right? Because he's not a snare. He's our God. He's the one who we should be calling on to, right? So I'm going to jump down to verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord, right? So Paul is letting you know, you know, if you think of yourself to be a servant of the Most High or spiritual, you know, it, it's not nothing that's teaching of a different doctrine or a new wine or a teaching lawlessness, right? He's letting you know that he's writing onto us the commandments of the Most High, right? Which is the law, statutes, and commandments in which our nation should be keeping nowadays, right? Just as I said, you know, those laws are not done away with. They're here to stay as long as this world is here. And this is what we should be keeping and following as a nation of people, as his chosen people, right? So Paul is letting you know he's just talking about the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. You know, he's reestablishing it within our nation, right? Verse 38, but if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Right. So if you want to be one of those people that going around teaching lawlessness and saying that the laws are done away with and teaching new wine, saying that we can worship other gods, they're all the same God, just different names. That's that's being ignorant, man. You know, because the Bible tells you that there's only one true God and there's no other God beside him. Right. And he's a God of a certain nation of people. But if you want to say, oh, he's the God of everyone. Everyone can call on to his name. Everyone have salvation and all of that and teach lawlessness and new wine, which is we're under grace and we can live however we want and do whatever we want. Right. That should be an ignorant. This as it says in verse 38 here. If any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Right. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophecy and forbid not to speak with tongues. Right. So that's the only thing that we should be coveting. You know, we should be coveting the signs of the times, you know, as the scriptures say, watching these prophecies unfold, you know, as the, the end of days come to uh, to an end here. Right. So that's the only thing that we should be coveting, man. You know, not the things of this world, not the false idol gods that our people just love to idolize and, and, and worship and follow. Right. 
or the materialistic things of this world, you know, or the 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 uh the pagan holidays, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter. You know, we're not supposed to be covered in those days, man. We're supposed to be covered in on to the things of the most high, which is the law, statutes, commandments, right? And 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 being watchful and sober minded for the prophecies unfolding, right? So it says, let all things be done decently and in order. And that's amongst us brothers, you know, the the ones in this truth, man, us brothers and sisters, you know, we're we're not supposed to be going at each other, man, about these laws, statutes, and commandments, you know. You know, talking about the laws that we're able to keep and the laws that we're not able to keep, which day is the Sabbath, or we're supposed to be wearing our fringes every day. And it clearly states it in, in the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38, that we're supposed to wear our fringes throughout our generations, man. And as far as dealing with the Sabbath, you know, some people say that uh, Saturday is the seventh day Sabbath. And then, you know, you have other brothers and sisters talking about, oh, you got to follow the new moon and, and go off that, which is the lunar calendar, you know, and it's it's just all confusion, man. And it, it, and it causes this scorn amongst us, you know what I mean? And we shouldn't be that way towards one another because, you know, we're still in captivity, right? So for me personally, the reason why I say most of our people would rather choose to keep the seventh day Sabbath is because nine times out of 10, right? You're working from Monday through Friday, right? So the reason why a lot of us keep Saturday as the seventh day Sabbath, because it works out best for us. If we're working a job, which is a nine to five, and it's Monday through Friday, then Saturday and Sunday we have off, right? So we're able to keep that seventh day sabbath which is saturday because we don't have to do anything and then we don't have to do anything the next day which is sunday which is considered the first day of the week and then we go back to work on the second day of the week which is monday through friday right so that schedule works out for us now you will have other brothers and sisters in the truth they will say oh well you got to go off the lunar calendar and the new moon and and count your sabbaths from there which is fine, you know, I understand that, you know, and that's the natural ordinance of, uh, ordinance of things. That's the way we should be doing it, right? But being that we're not in our homeland and things are not working out for us the best way as we would like them to. And if you think about it, if you're on a, a nine to five, right? How can you keep that lunar Sabbath? Because that Sabbath is going to fall on different days of the week every month and every week you know what i'm saying so one day it might fall on a monday the next week it might fall on a tuesday and then the week after that it might fall on wednesday right so my question is how are you going to take all of those days off every week of the month you know some of us or most of us i can say we have jobs where we can't even we could barely take one day off or two days out of the month you know what I'm saying? So if you work in a, a, a normal nine to five, how can you take different days of the week off every month, which is every week? I mean, mess around, you, <laughs> you're going to you're going to lose your job by the end of the month. You ain't going to have no job. You call yourself coming back in to work after the Sabbath and the boss will just be like, yo, turn back around, go home. You don't have a job no more. You take too many days off. Right. So. Us brothers and sisters in his faith, man, it's like, you know, we would love to follow the natural ordinance of things, but in this society, you can't do that. So the reason why I say most of us choose the seventh day as Saturday, you know, because it's more convenient for us. If, if we're working a, a normal nine to five Monday through Friday job, just as I said, we have Saturday and Sunday off. So that works out, out fine for us because we have Saturday off and we can also rest the next day, which is Sunday, which is another day off if we choose to, or we can treat it as the first day of the week, which it really is after the seventh day Sabbath and continue on with our lives. Right. So that's the reason why I say, you know, most of us, just as I said before, it works out better for us if we keep that seventh day Saturday, a uh, 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 Sabbath as a Saturday. Right. So as it says here in verse 40, let all things be done decently in order. Right. So, you know, and also, as Paul says, you know, you can't judge a man on the Sabbath or his meats, 
you know, or, or other things that he do, as long as he's keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, you, you know, you can't judge a man from that. If he choose to keep a seventh day, a Sabbath on a Saturday, as long as he's keeping that seventh day Sabbath, you know, that's all good. Or if you want to keep the lunar Sabbath or whatever from the new moon, that's fine too. You know, if you have your own company, your own job or whatever, you can do that. It's your own job, right? But if you're working a nine to five, hey, good luck with that. You know, if, if your boss allow you to take all of those days off during the week, then hey, so be it. You know, more power to you, right? I'm glad that you're able to do that. But, you know, for all of us brothers and sisters in this walk of faith, we're not able to do that, man. So, again, as it says, let all things be done decently in order. You know, we shouldn't be at each other's necks arguing about things like that, man. You know, just like I said, as long as we keep in the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High and, and believing in his son, Hamashiach, in truth and sincerity, all of us is going to be all right, man. And when he sent his son, Hamashiach, back to redeem his chosen people, then, you know, we're going to be set in order and we're going to be doing things the right way, right? But until then, we can only do what we can, right? All right, so in continuation, I think I was saying something about the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation during part one of my video, right? And I want to bring that out too. So I'm going to go to the book of Daniel chapter six, and I'm going to start at verse 10. Okay, here we go. Verse 10. And it reads. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signaled, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before Salakia. His God, which is the Most High, Yahweh, and he did aforetime, right? So the reason why I brought that out in the first uh, uh, part of my video, I was referring to this right here. You know, this is how we're supposed to pray, you know, and this is how you know you're praying to the Most High. You know, you're not praying to some false idol or some false deity, right? Because according to the biblical scripture here in, in uh, Daniel verse 10, you know, we're supposed to pray towards Jerusalem, which is the east, right? As it says here, right? His house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God, right? Which is the most high, you know, the God of the biblical scriptures, you know, not Allah not Osiris and Horus and Amun-Ra, right? His God, right? Not the false image of Christ, okay? His God, as he did aforetime. Verse 11. Then these men assembled, found David praying and making supplication before his God, right? Verse 12. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has... Thou not sign a decree that every man that shall ask a, pet a petition of any god or man with within thirty days, Salakia, save of thee, it, it which it means except for thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians which altereth not, right? Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, right? Which is a part of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? The, the, the 12 tribes of Jacob, you can say too, but his name was changed into Israel in the book of uh, Genesis, right? So in continuation, regarding not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. 
So they're letting the king know of Babylon that, you know, uh, Daniel, which is of Judah, the 12 tribes of Jacob, you know, he was praying to the most high three times a day. Right. So that's that's actually letting you know there that there's a difference of gods between Judah and the people who they're in captivity to. Right. Verse 14. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and the Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king established may be changed. Right? Then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, which is Daniel's God, right? The Most High, the God of Israel. Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. Right? So that's letting you know there that the king that threw Daniel into the den of lions, he don't worship the Most High, which is the one true God of the scriptures, right? He have a whole different God, right? So that's letting us know that we have our God who we're supposed to be looking up to, which is the Most High of the scriptures, you know? Not, you know, Allah and Buddha and Santa Maria, a.k.a. St. Mary, Osiris, Horus, you know, all down the line, man, all of these false idol gods, right? Verse 17, and a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, right? He didn't say the God of the Bible. It didn't say the God of Israel, right? His lords, right? So that's, again, that's letting you know that they have different gods that they worship, you know, that the purpose might be, it's like it might not be changed concerning Daniel, right? So when Daniel was tossed into the, the den of lions, he was praying on to the Most High to protect him. But the king that threw him into the den of lions, he was praying on to his God, which is a whole different of a God, that the lions may destroy him, right? So that's the reason why I mentioned Daniel 6 in part one of this lesson that I'm doing here, right? Because that's to let you know that we have different gods and we only supposed to be worshiping our God, which is the one true God of the biblical scriptures, right? Not all of these other false deities, man. You know what I'm saying? Because that's their God. They're only doing what they're supposed to do is worshiping their God. So we supposed to be worshiping our God, right? Which is keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, what we're told to do. Okay, so I'm going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and 18. Okay. Verse 18. And it reads, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. Right? So that's Christ right there. That's Hamashiach letting you know that he is the one that liveth. Not like these other gods you see out here that's graven images, as it says in the book of Zephaniah, that's dumb idols. They can't speak, they can't hear, they can't talk, they can't breathe. There's no breath in the midst of them. So they're, they're dead. They're dead, dumb idols, right? But Hamashiach is letting you know right here, verse 18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. So that's letting you know he have the power to take your life. He have the keys of hell and death. Right. All of these other gods don't do that. The so-called Muhammad of Islam and Allah, they don't have the keys of hell and death. Right. Buddha don't have the keys of hell and death. Uh, Osiris and Horus, Tammuz, Nimrod, Semiramis. I mean, you go on down the list. Right. Especially Tammuz for, you know, today is Ash Wednesday. 
you know, a lot of the, the idolaters, you know, they, they're celebrating that now. They're getting that, that ass cross put on their forehead, which is the mark of Tammuz, right? And his father, Nimrod. You know, so all of them, they don't have the keys of hell and death. You know, Hamashiach is letting you know right here, he's the one that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Right. So I wanted to bring that out since I mentioned that in part one, that he's the one that have the power over all things. Right. So I'm going to go to the book of St. Luke, chapter four. And I'm going to start at verse 5. And it reads, And the devil, taking him up onto a high mountain, shewed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. It's like in a moment of time, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me and to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. And Hamashiach answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, which is my God, which is the most high, right? His father, which is in heaven and him only shalt thou serve, right? Not Mohammed, not Allah, not Buddha, not Osiris and Horus, not St. Mary. He didn't say St. Mary, which is his mom, right? But, you know, most of these Roman Catholics, that's what that's who they're worshiping and following. And our people, too, who claim to be Roman Catholics. They're following St. Mary, but you have Hamashiach here. He's saying, and him only shalt thou serve, which is the most high, right? So that kills the whole Roman Catholic doctrine right there of worshiping St. Mary, especially our people that's stuck in that, that idolatry, man. You know what I'm saying? So it says right here again, this is what Satan says, which these are the other gods here. You know, if thou... Therefore, will worship me and shall be thine. All shall be thine. So that's the deceitfulness of Satan. You know, he'll promise you the world. Just as it says in the book of Job, chapter 9, 24, the world is given on to the hands of the wicked, right? So as he says here in verse 6, and the devil said unto him, all this power will I give thee and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, right? And to whomsoever I will I give it, right? So he's letting Hamashiach know, you know, hey, the world is mine. You know, so this this confirms Job 9, 24, that the earth is given on to the hand of the wicked, right? Which is the devil. And if you look up the definition of devil, you know, anyone can be a devil, but the devil is the ones that's running the world now. And if you look up the definition of devil, it just means to deceive, you know, to fool, to trick, to use sorcery, right? So that's what's being done now, you know, from the oppressors. They're using a whole lot of trickery and sorcery to keep our people in sin, to keep us disconnected from the Most High, right? Which is our God, right? So as it says again in verse 8, And Hamashiach answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written that thou worship the Lord thy God, which is our God your power, right? Your Elohim and his father in heaven, right? And him only shalt thou serve. Okay, so I'm going to go to the book of St. Mark, chapter 7. And I'm going to start verse 20.
Okay, and it reads, And he said, That which cometh out of the man that defileth the man, from Salaki, for from within, out of the heart, men proceed evil thoughts, idolatries, fornications, murderers, thieves, thefts, Salaki, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, laxiviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy, right? So with the blasphemy, we are already determined what the meaning of blasphemy is in part one, right? You know, that's when you, you blaspheme the, the, the Most High and his son Hamashiach. You know, you tell people that, uh, oh, Hamashiach don't have a color. He don't have a lineage. He don't have a nationality, right? And it's all in the scriptures, man. In the book of Daniel also, in the book of Revelation also, right? So that's blasphemy when you're going around worshiping the false image of Christ, which is in most people's households or in churches or on crosses on a crucifix that you have on your gold chain, right? Or that some of our people have tattooed on them, right? All of that is blasphemy, man, because that's the false image of Christ. You know, people going around saying he doesn't have a color or nationality or ethnicity, but they still paint him a certain color, right? That's blasphemy, man. Pride, the most high hate pride. When our people go around talking about, oh, I don't need the law, statutes, and commandments to live. We can do whatever we want. We can wear whatever we want. You know, our women out here dressing, you know, uh, uh, laxivious listening, you know. You know, they're being promiscuous. You know, they, they're wearing all of these tight, revealing clothes. You're not supposed to be like that, man. So that's pride, you know. When someone's trying to tell you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, you know, you're talking about, oh, the laws are done away with, so I'm going to eat this catfish sandwich. You know, or I'm going to eat this fried shrimp. You know, this this steamed lobster and crab, you know. All of this nonsense, man, this calamari salad, this octopus salad, right? So that's pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile of a man, right? So that's what defiles you. You know, when you have an evil mind like that and an evil eye, just as it says right here, you know, when you hate your own people, you know, that you, you hate them so much that you're willing to murder them. You're willing to steal from them. You know, you, you, you're willing to bear false witness against them, right? All of that is an evil eye, man. And, and corvettedness, you know, when you, you're corvetting all of the things of this world, you know, all of the pagan holidays, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, you know, 4th of July, you know, all, all of the, all of the money, you know what I'm saying? You're willing to defile the Sabbath to do overtime, to make more money, right? To get, you know, that brand new car or whatever, or you want to get those brand new clothes, brand new shoes or whatever, that nice gold chain or jewelry ring or whatever, right? All of that is a uh, covetousness, right? You have wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, pride and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile a man, right? So that's what all our people's into, man. As it says here in verse 31, idolatries, fornications, murderers, right? So what you think was going on uh, Valentine's Day, which is another pagan holiday, by the way, you know, keeping an ancient Greek and Rome custom, right? And I already brought that out in one of my videos, but that's what our people was into, man, which is fornications, adulteries, murderers, evil thoughts, right? So this comes with all worshiping a different God, man. When you worship the false image of Christ, which is associated with Christianity, they're ones that's teaching lawlessness. They teaching that you don't have to keep the laws anymore. So if you're not keeping the laws, which is the big 10, then how can you love your own brother and sister, right? You're going to steal from them. You're going to kill them. You're going to bear false witness. You're not going to obey your father and your mother, right? You know, as the first commandment says, you know, thou shalt not have no other gods before me. But if you're worshiping that false image of Christ, that's exactly what you're doing. Right. So if you're not keeping the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, which is the Big Ten, you're going to do all of these things right from within out of the heart of men proceed evil thoughts, idolatries, fornications and murders. Now, fornication, you know, you can be a drunk as a fornicator. You can be a smoker, smoking marijuana, smoking cigarettes, doing all kinds of drugs, molly, popping pills. Right. That's all fornications, man. And murderers. You know, that if someone look at you wrong or if someone step on your shoes or whatever, 
you know, or if someone bump you by mistake, you you willing to kill them, man. That's how much you 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 hate your own people, right? So this all comes with not keeping the law, statute, commandments of the Most High, man. Right. So I'm gonna go to the book of Proverbs, chapter fifteen. Okay, here we go. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15. I start at verse 3. And it reads, The eyes of the Lord, Yahweh, are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. Right. So the most high, you know, he's letting you know here that he's in every place beholding the evil and the good. You know, so if you're the one that's going around teaching lawlessness, teaching our people to worship other gods, you know, teaching us that we can defile the Sabbath or eat all kinds of abominable foods and live however we want. Just live lawlessness, you know, uh, um, blasphemy in God, saying that he doesn't have a lineage or or, or color, you know, then that's that's a. Uh, that's the evil things that you're doing at the most highest beholding, right? And he's beholding us too, the ones that's actually believing in him according to the scripture and truth and sincerity, right? And following his son Hamashiach and keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, right? So he's letting us know that he's acknowledging everything. You know, he's beholding the evil and the good, right? Jumping down to verse six. In the house of the righteous, which is the people that keeps the law, statutes, and commandments of the most high, right? is much treasure but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble right so your wicked people just as i said those are the ones that's living lawlessly right they think that the laws are done away with you know they want to be into all of these different ideologies and religions and all that stuff worshiping all the gods and you know they, they blaspheme in the most high and the one true god and his son hamashiach that's the wicked right here that you see right so it says here, but in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Okay. So I'm going to jump down to um, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Who are the ones that's forsaken the way? The ones that's teaching lawlessness. The ones that don't want to keep the law, statute, and commandment to the Most High. They want to go and worship other gods, Allah, Buddha, right? Uh, they want to worship Amun Ra. They want to they want to follow Muhammad and worship Allah, right? So those are the ones that's forsaken the way of the Most High. In continuation, it says, "And he that hateth reproof shall die." So you're gonna die. You know, us brothers and sisters in the truth, we try to tell you to keep the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. Keep the Sabbath. Keep the dietary law, right? Don't eat that pork chop. Don't eat that steamed lobster and crab, right? Don't eat that catfish sandwich. Don't eat that octopus salad, right? Don't eat those clams and mussels, right? So you hate a free proof. So you're going to die. You're going to get that high blood pressure. You're going to get that high cholesterol. You know, you're going to get that, um, those diabetes, right? You're going to lose your kidneys, right? You're going to have that stroke from eating all of that uh, pork, the ham, the bacon, the BLTs in the morning, right? So that's what that is, man. If, if you hate reproof, and, and instruction to keep the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, then, you know, you're just going to die. That's just the way it is, right? I'm going to jump down to verse 12. A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him, neither will he go on to the wise, right? So the scorners, that's all they're going to do. We trying to tell you to keep the dietary law. You know, don't eat all of that abomination that's in the, in the Most High's eyes, right? But, you know, what the scorners do, they're going to mock you. And they're going to say, oh, the laws are done away with. We can still eat this. You know, the Most High don't care. He's going to forgive us. All we have to do is call on his name, right? 
and then they go and post that big ham on social media or that that big seafood platter with the catfish and the uh the the, the grilled shrimp and the steamed lobster and crab right the land and seafood platter you got the steak and then you got the shrimp all around it right you got the you're mixing the clean with the unclean and all of that is an abomination even the steak the steak is is clean but if you're mixing it with the shrimp and the lobster that makes that unclean too so it's just one big plate of abomination in the eyes of the most high right so those are your scorners as it says in verse 12 here a scorner loveth not that reproveth him neither will he go on to the why so they're not even going to inquire man just as it says in the scripture you know why people they have not known the most high nor do they inquire of him or want to learn his ways right so they, they're not going to come on to us you know the ones that's trying to tell them to to come back to the old paths and and worship the most high of the scriptures and truth and sincerity and keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They're not going to do that, man. They don't care. You know, they're stuck in the ways of the world and they're carnal minded and, you know, they're materialistic and they just want to just live lawlessly, man. So those are your scorners there, right? So I'm going to go to the eighth chapter in Proverbs and I'm going to go to verse 12. Okay, here we go. And I'm start at verse 12 through 21. Okay. And it reads, I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out knowledge of the witty inventions right the witty inventions are the inventions of the wicked those are the snares that they set for the most highest people right to keep them in sin okay the fear of the lord the most high is to hate evil right the evil is basically the lawlessness the ones who don't keep the law statutes, commandments of the most high and teach people to worship other false gods right so that's evil pride arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth I do hate. So the Most High is letting you know that he hates all of these things. You know, he hate evilness. He hate pride. He hate arrogancy in which most of our people are, right? Unfortunately, the lawless ones, as we like to call them, right? And the evil way and the forward mouth, which is the proud mouth, I do hate. Counsel is mine in sound wisdom, which is... The wisdom of the scriptures, you know, the law, statutes, commandments, right? I am understanding. I have strength. But me, king's reign, so like it, by me, king's reign, and princes decree justice, right? So the Most High is letting you know the way the world is set up now, you know, with all of the presidents, all of the, so like it, the presidents, the ambassadors to different countries, you know, the, the dictators or whatever. The Most High is letting you know that he's the one that set them in power, right? not from their own force or their own power. You know, he gave them the power to reign, right? I'm going to read it again. It says, by me, kings reign, and princes decree justice. By me, princes rule, and nobles, even all the judges of the earth, right? Verse 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me, right? Early shall find me. How you seek the most high? By keeping the law, statutes, and commandments, doing what he says, right? That's what he instructed us to do ever since the wilderness when he brought, you know, our ancestors out of the land of Egypt, right? So, as he says here, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Riches and honor are with me. Yeah, durable riches and righteousness. The righteousness is the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments, right? My fruit is better than gold. Yeah, then fine gold and my revenue, then choice silver, right? That's the best silver that you could come across in this world. Verse 20, 
I lead in the way of righteousness, right? Which is the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments again, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, which is the kingdom, you know? And the ones that love them, just as I said, they're the ones that's keeping the laws and the commandments, right? In continuation, I will fill their treasures, right? So all of the things that we want down here on earth, you know, if we make the kingdom and, you know, just as I said, we, we're, we're believing in the most high in truth and sincerity and following his son Hamashiach and we make the kingdom of heaven, he's going to give us the treasures, as it says here. I will fill their treasures, right? And as it says here, that I may cause them, cause those, Salakia, that love me to inherit substance. So those are all of the things that we love, man. All of the things that we desire, the Most High is going to give it to us. You know, only thing we have to do is keep his laws, statutes, commandments, and believe in on him. And only him, right? Not all of these false gods out here, man. So I'm going to jump up to... Proverbs 6, and I'm going to start at verse 16. Okay. Okay, here we go. I'm going to go down to verse 16. And it reads, these six things doth the Lord, Yahweh hate. Yeah, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, right? So those wicked imaginations will be the following of false idol gods, false gods that can't do anything for you. You can't call on to them. They can't save you out of your trouble, right? And then you're actually persuading other people to do so. Oh, come on, let's follow let's, let's, let's follow Allah and Muhammad. You know, those are the real gods. Let's, oh, worship um, the sun god, which is Amun Ra. You know, that Bible is trash, man. You know, you got you to gotta come back to Egypt, brother. You got to worship Amun Ra, right? You're teaching people to, to get that tattoo of Osiris and Horus on, on their shoulder, right? On their arm. So that's, you know, the ones that's divisive, wicked imaginations. You know, they lead people astray from the one true God, which is the most high, right? So a heart that divisive, wicked imaginations, feet that's swift, that's like it, that's be swift and run into mischief. So that's what our people love to do, man. You know, our people just love, you know, just as they say, uh, misery love company, right? So that's what our people do, man. They are quick to run to mischief. You know, if they hear someone, and it, it don't even have to be true. It could be a rumor. You know, if they think they heard someone talking greasy about them or bad about them or whatever, or if someone giving them a dirty look, and they probably not even looking at them, they probably looking past them. But, you know, our people have so much hate for each other. That's what we tend to do, right? So we're quick to run to mischief. You know, to, we're, we're, we're quick to fight one another. You know what I mean? We're quick to hurt one another, kill one another too. And it's it's bad, man. That's why when Christ was sent into this world, his commandment was for us to love one another because he know how we are towards one another. And it's a shame because we're not like that with the other nations, right? But we're like that towards one another at the drop of a pen, you know? So that's why the Most High says, in heart that device of wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and running to mischief. And, and, and that's slain talk, you know what I'm saying right here? Feet that be swift, right, and run into mischief. So you know that's that's how our people talk. So that's how you know the Most High is our God, right? Because all of this, you know, the the, the certain dialect that he's using here, man. You know, just like in other parts of the scriptures too, right? Going down to verse nineteen, a false witness that speaketh lies, right? Just as I was saying, you know, a person that's bearing false witness against their own brothers and sisters, right? You know, just just because they just want to start something, you know, they just they just love mischief. They love evilness. Right. Because, the, you know, just as we said, you know, they're, they're the lawless ones. They don't believe in keeping the law, statutes, the commandments of the most high. 
and rehearsing the righteous acts, right? With their own brother and sister, right? So I'm gonna read it again. A false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren. This as I was saying in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, you know, let all things be done in decent and order, right? So, you know, we're not supposed to be disputing with each other about the Sabbath or about certain laws that we can keep and can't keep, you know, about the fringes, about um, the dietary law or whatever. You know, some people want to be vegan and then you have other people that still want to eat meat, you know, then there's a little discord when the uh, Passover come and we have to have that Passover lamb, right? And the unleavened bread. So that causes a whole bunch, a, a, a bunch of discord between us, man. You know what I'm saying? And we're, we're not supposed to be judging each other meats. You know, if you choose to be a vegan, then fine. You know, if, if it's a healthier choice to you, then it's all good. You know, there's no law about not eating meat or whatever, but there's also no law about us eating meat. So, you know, we can eat meat or we can't eat meat. You know what I'm saying? Just as the scripture says, like I said earlier in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, let all things be done decently in order, right? So, as it says here in verse uh, 20, my son, keep my father's commandments and forsake not the law, right, of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thy heart, which is your mind, and tie them about thy neck, right? When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee, right? For the commandment, which is the law of statute commandments, is a lamp and the law of light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life, right? So the Most High is letting you know that keeping the law of statute commandments is the way to go. Not worshiping all of these other lawless gods, all of these false deities, right? And he's letting you know whatever you do, you know, when you're sleeping, when you're awake or when you're out and about, you're running your errands or whatever. As it says here in verse 22, when thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. So it's always going to be in your mind to keep the law of statutes and commandments, you know, no matter what, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're doing, it's always going to be with you. And the most high in verse 21, he's saying, bind them continually upon thy heart, which is always dwell on the law of statutes and commandments in your mind. You know, no matter what you're doing, always think to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, right? And as in Numbers chapter 15, verse 38, it tells you that we're always supposed to have our fringes on. This actually reminds us to keep the commandments while we're out and about, right? So that falls in line with that too, right? And he's letting you know in verse 20 here, as I go back up, it says, My son, keep thy father's commandment and forsake not the law of thy mother. Right. So you always supposed to give honor to your parents, your father and your mother, no matter what, man, no matter what y'all going through, you know, or no matter if you had a fallout or, or anything else or whatever, you know, you, you always supposed to honor your dad and your mom, man, no matter what. Right. And always keep the law, statutes, commandments and forsake not the law. Right. So I'm going to go to. Proverbs. 23 and i'm gonna start at verse one okay verse one and it reads when thou sittest to eat with a ruler Consider diligently what is before thee, and put knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Be not desirous of his danities, for they are deceitful meat. Right? So, basically what it's saying here, you know, don't be desirous of his danities, which is the doctrines of worshiping his gods, which are false gods, right? And, 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 and being uh, coveted towards his 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 deities, right? So we're, just like the scriptures say, we only supposed to covet the uh, the prophecies and, and covet the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High, 
in truth and sincerity. So, you know, you can't be going off following these other nations of people who worship their God and, and sort of entice you to, to leave your God to worship their God, which is going off in the eyes of the Most High. That's an abomination, right? So it says here, be not desirous for his deities, for they are deceitful meat. And they are. They're deceitful and they're trapped to our people. You know, when we want to follow their their lawlessness and their doctrines and their philosophies of these other different false gods, right? So they're deceitful meat, right? So we're not supposed to have an appetite to, to, to always be willing to follow these other nations and their gods, right? So I'm going to jump down to verse 6. Eat thou not the bread of him that have an evil eye, right? Neither desire thou his dainty meats. This as it says earlier in, in uh, verse 2. For as he thinketh in his heart, which is his mind, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart, which is his mind, is not with thee, right? So you have all of these other nations, man, that's worshiping all of these other different gods. You know, they, they have no acknowledgement for our God, which is the God of the scriptures whatsoever. You know, they have an evil eye towards you. And their heart, which is their mind, is not with you. They want to keep you in sin, right? Just as it says in the book of Hosea, they set their mind on the iniquities of our people. They set snares for us to keep us in sin, to keep us disconnected from the Most High, which is our God, right? So as it says again in verse 6, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, which is he's enticing you, you know, to eat and drink, you know, drink the doctrines that he's feeding you, the deceit, all of the lies, right, of his false God and all of his vain philosophies, right? Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee, right? The morsel which thou hast eaten, shalt thou vomit up and lose thy sweet words, right? So all of the all of the meat that you're going to eat from this guy, which is his doctrine and his his vain philosophies that goes against the Most High, you're going to vomit it up, and you're going to lose thy sweet words, which is the wisdom of the Scriptures, you know, which is the keeping of the law, statutes, commandments, right? So you're going to lose that. And you're going to go off and the next thing you know, you're going to be worshiping the false image of Christ. You're going to be worshiping Mohammed, Allah, uh, Santa Maria, Buddha, right? You're going to be worshiping Amun Ra, talking about the woman is God, right? You're going to be worshiping Horus, Osiris. You're going to be an atheist, right? Saying that there is no God. You don't believe in God, right? All of that foolishness. You're going to believe in Luciferian doctrine, joining in these uh, secret societies doing evil rituals right so that's what you're going to do you're going to lose your sweet words and you're going to lose the ways of the most high man when you follow in these other nations and and taking part in their meat okay so i'm gonna go to the book of saint john chapter seven and i'm gonna go down to verse 38 Okay, and it believe it reads Salakia. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So those living waters is the doctrine of the scriptures. It's the truth of the scriptures. It's the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments, right? It's the believing in the most high and the following of his son Hamashiach, right? It's the giving of the good news, the good gospel, and enticing your fellow brethren and sister to stay in the laws and to keep the laws or to come back to the laws if they don't know anything about it, right? So that's the the flow rivers of living water. You know, that's that's the, the rivers of life, right? That's what gives you life, okay? I'm going to go to chapter 15, and I'm going to start at verse 14. In the book of St. John 2.
As a matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse 1 here. All right, look up St. John chapter 15. And this is in red letter. You don't see the red letter here, you know, because it's on the, the screen here. But, you know, this is uh, Yahushai talking. This is who the world's called Jesus Christ, right? I am the true vine, and my father is the husband man, which is the most high up in heaven, right? Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away, right? So what he means here when he says that, if you're a true follower of Hamashiach in truth and sincerity, you're going to be keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High in order for you to bear the fruit. You have to go out and teach your nation of people to do so. The ones that don't know about keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? That's how you bear in the good fruit. You, you sow in the seed, right? You're giving the milk, right? So that's what it's saying here. Right, in continuation, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So we're always supposed to be out here teaching this word, the good gospel, right? You know, the, the second coming of Hamashiach to redeem his hopeful elect, right? The keeping of the law, statutes, commandments. And, and and waking them up and planting that seed in their mind for them to continue in the, the, the law, statutes, and commandments to the Most High, right? That's bringing forth the fruit, okay? Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. So you can't bear fruit of yourself, right? You can't go out there teaching lawlessness or worshiping other gods you know worshiping the false image of christ worshiping uh amen ra right saint mary that's that's not abiding in hamashiach right so if you just like i said if you follow in hamashiach hamashiach was sent to the world to instill the law statutes, commandments back into a sinful nation which was our forefathers and mothers right because they was living lawlessly they was living gentile minded right so that's the reason why Christ was sent back into this world. Okay. I'll read it again. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth much fruit. So like us like it bringeth forth much fruit for without me ye can do nothing right if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burnt right so that's basically symbolic to going to the lake of fire you know, not making the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be cast into the lake of fire. You know, if you call yourself a follower of Hamashiach in truth and sincerity, you're going to spread those laws, statutes, commandments to our people. You're going to entice and persuade people to come back to those old paths, right? Get rid of that old man and come out of the ways of the world. You know, stop, stop believing in all these different doctrines of men and false idols and false gods, right? And, and vain philosophies, right? So you're going to follow... Hamashiach in truth and sincerity, and you're going to try to bring forth much fruit, which is the good fruit, right? You're going to try to implant that seed in them, okay? So I'm going to go down to verse 14. As a matter of fact, I'm going to read 10. If ye keep my commandments... Ye shall abide in my love, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? Even as I have kept my Father's commandments, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, and abide in His love, okay? So that's Yahushai, in which the world calls Jesus Christ. He's letting you know here that He kept the Most High's commandments. That's the reason why He was sent into this world. Just as I said, to instill the law, statutes, and commandments back into our forefathers and foremothers, right? So he kept the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. He didn't come teaching a new doctrine as the religious Christian will say, 
you know, all that the laws are done away with and we're in grace. And the only thing we have to do is just believing in Christ and we're going to make it into heaven. Right. We can sin. We can live however we want. We can eat abominable. But all we have to do is just believe in Christ and we're making it into heaven. Right. But right here it says. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abided in his love. So that's the only way that you're going to abide in the love of the most high by keeping his law, statutes, and commandments and abide in Hamashiach's love. Right. So if you're living lawlessly and teaching lawlessly and, and enticing people to worship other gods, then you're not abiding in the most high's love. Right. And that's plain and simple there. You know, that's that's written in red letter there. Right. I'm going to jump down to verse 14. Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever I command you. Right. Henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my father, I have made known unto you. Right? So just as it says in verse 10 here, as we go back, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. So he's letting you know that he's letting his followers know to keep his commandments and his father's commandments, right? Ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Right? Jump back down to 15. Henceforth, I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what the Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my father. I have made known unto you. Right? Okay. Verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordain you that ye shall go forth and bring forth much fruit and that your fruit shall remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name, which is his real true name, Hamashiach, right? In which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, right? He shall, Salaki, he may give it to you. So if you want to ask the most high, and his son Hamashiach, anything in their name, in their true name, you have to ask in the truth name, you know, uh, uh, according to the, the, the truth and sincerity, right? Not of what you've been taught or what you've been, you, you heard all your life, right? You know, he have a name, right? But now, you know, unfortunately, our people know him as God and Lord, you know, but he does have a name, right? And all of those names have been switched around. They've been taken out of the Bible. So, you know, you have to do your due diligence and study, you know, back into the, the, the ancient Hebrew or or even Greek, you know. And then you got to translate those words into Hebrew to see what his original name is. But that takes a lot of study. And, and then the Most High will give you all of that knowledge in due time, right? You just got to do your due diligence and see what his name truly is. Okay, but it says here. And that your fruit shall remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Okay. So, I'm going to jump down to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 8. And I'm going to start at verse 5. Okay, and, and basically what this is talking about here is what today is, which is Ash Wednesday, right? All right, so and it reads, Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way towards the north. So I lift up up my eyes the way towards the north and behold northward at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry right so that's basically talking about your blasphemy you know that's talking about your false image of christ right so just as it says in the book of deuteronomy the most high is a jealous god right 
and he don't want you worshiping all of these other false idols and deities and 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 engraving images right carved graven images so it says here at the gate of the altar this image of jealousy in the entry right so they're, they're already blaspheming God here, as it says in verse 5, verse 6. He said, furthermore unto me, son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I shall go far from my sanctuary. So the Most High is letting you know that, you know, our forefathers and foremothers, they was pissing them off so much. That he wanted to leave the sanctuary, which is us. You know, it says that the Most High dwelleth in the midst of Zion, which is us, right? So we was pissing them off so much with these great abominations and worshiping the, the false image of Christ, right? And the false image of him, that that was considered a great abomination unto him and that he was willing to leave the sanctuary, as it says here, right? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than that right and he brought me to the door of the court and when i looked up behold a hole in the wall then said he unto me son of man dig now in the wall and when i digged in the wall behold a door and he said unto me go in and behold the wicked abominations right that they do here so i went in and saw and behold Every form of creeping thing, right, which is an abomination unto the Most High, an abominable beast, right? What would be your abominable beast? It would be your pig. It would be your shellfish. It would be your catfish. You know, it would be your, all of the things that you can't eat, right? Your your, your critters, right? You have your, your, your rats, your dogs, whatever. All of the things that you can't eat, your snakes, your alligators, you know, your lizards, your frogs, all of that stuff, right? Right? Form every form of creepy things and abominable beasts and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about, right? So they had a whole bunch of abominations up there, man, in that church, right? And which was supposed to be the house of the Most High, right? So they had all of the idols up in there. They had all of the false images of the Most High and the Messiah. They had all of the graven images, which is your, your cross, right? Your crucifix. You know, you probably had uh, Islam up in there, you know, uh, 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 pictures of Mohammed, Allah, and all of that stuff, right? You probably had pictures of Egypt up in there, you know, the Eye of Horus and Osiris. You probably had Amun Ra up in there. You probably had Buddha up in there, right? All of the idols that the Most High hates, right? Verse 11, and there stood before him 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood... Janaziah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in his chamber of his imagery, right? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth, right? So that's what they say. That's what our people do, man. They go off into all of this, this idolatry and they think that the most high don't see it. You know, they think that they're doing these things in secret, even breaking the law, statutes, and commandments. They think that the most high doesn't see them, man. But as, as it says in the book of Proverbs, you know, he's in every place and he's beholding the good and the evil. Right. So the most high sees everything, man. You, you can't do anything in secret. Right. I'm going to jump down to. Verse 13 here, okay? He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, right? Which is the Most High's house. They supposed to be worshiped, worshiping only the Most High, right? which was towards the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz, right? Okay, so that's the son of Nimrod, right? You have your, today, your your religious uh, Christian cross, which is the crucifix, is shaped like a T, you notice, right? 
So when you put one and one together and you look at, at this name here, which is Nimrod's son, it's Tammuz. It starts with a T, right? So that's what your Ash Wednesday and your um, your your Lent is all about. It's about the weeping for Tammuz, right? So it says here in verse 15, Then said he unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these, right? So it seems like every time, you know, the Most High tells Ezekiel to turn around, he sees something more worse than they're already doing, right? Verse 16, And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, the door of the temple of the Lord, the Most High, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, Yahweh, and their faces towards the east, and they worship, right? They worshiped the sun towards the east, right? So who is Tammuz? He's known as the sun god, right? The son of Nimrod. And what does that sound like? Worship the sun? That's Sunday worship. Just as I was explaining in part one of this lesson here, you know, according to the book of, um, uh, 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 what's that, um, what's that, uh, uh, I think it's, uh, Zenapia, right? Slaki, if I'm getting that wrong, but it's in chapter one, Zephaniah, I'm sorry, Slaki, Zephaniah is in the book of Zephaniah, chapter one, as it says, when our people go off from worshiping the host of heaven, right? And then we determined what the host of heaven was, which was in the book of Genesis, right? In chapter two and chapter one. So this is what this is talking about here in verse 16 in the book of Ezekiel as Salakia. And they worship the sun towards the east. So the sun rises in the east and it sets in the west, right? So that's your Sunday worship. And which is worshiping Tammuz, the son of Nimrod, and which is the sun god, right? So that's that's what your Ash Wednesday and your Lent is basically all about here, okay? So I'm going to go to the book of Revelation. I'll give you all about two more scriptures and then I'm going to end it, right? Okay, here we are in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and I'm going to go down to verse 9. Okay, it reads, And he saith unto me, Write, bless are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. The Lamb is... You know, Yahawashai, that's the Hamashiach, right? So in the marriage is the uh, the bidding of the marriage. You know, that's the redemption of the Most High's chosen, you know. So blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are the saints. These are the true saints of the Most High, right? Verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not i am thy thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of hamashiach in which this world calls jesus christ right and the angel tells john to worship the most high for the testimony of hamashiach is the spirit of prophecy right so if you have the testimony of Hamashiach and you out here spreading the good gospel, which is the keeping of the law, statutes, and commandments to the people, right? You have the testimony of Hamashiach. You know, just as it says in the book of St. John, when Hamashiach was sent to this world, he kept the commandments of the Most High. So that's the testimony of Hamashiach there, right? And that's the spirit of prophecy. So if we're spreading this good gospel out here to the masses, we, we actually have the spirit of the prophecy. We're, we're watching the times, right? We're, we're seeing the prophecies unfold in this world today because we know that we're living in the last days, right? 
So the spirit tells John to worship the Most High, right? He didn't say worship Allah. He didn't say worship Amun-Ra. He didn't say worship Tammuz and Semiramis and Nimrod, right? He didn't say be a five percenter. He didn't say be an atheist, right? A Luciferian worshiping Satan. He didn't say that. He said worship God, which is the Most High, right? And then he let John know that he's a fellow servant and of thy brethren, right? So the ones who's keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High in truth and sincerity and believing in Hamashiach, you know, you can consider the angels of the Most High our fellow servants and of thy brethren, right? So that's what that's all about, man. So we're not supposed to be out here idolizing and following all of these false, vain uh, 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 philosophies of the worlds, you know, and, and corvetting what the other nations have, you know, the, the materialistic things, you know, corvetting their pagan holidays, you know, worshiping their gods. We're not supposed to be doing this thing, man. And this is the angel of the most high, the one true God, right? The living God of the scriptures. He's telling John to worship him, which is the most high, right? So that's what we're supposed to be doing, man. All right, so I'm going to end it here in the book of um, Psalm. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm going to give you two more. I'm going to go to the book of Psalm, chapter 31. And I'm going to start at verse 3. All right. And it reads, For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Right. So this is King David. He's talking about the Most High. You know, he's asking the Most High to guide me and lead me. Pull me out of the net that they have laid privily for me. For thou art my strength, right? So he's talking about the other nations. You know, they're, they're laying the snares for, for David, right? In Jerusalem, the people of Jerusalem, you know, to worship other gods and go off and believe in these false vain philosophies of the world, right? You know, all of those are traps to us because that leads us off from being connected to the Most High, which is the Most High of the Scriptures, the God of the Bible, right? So they, they lay their nets privily, right? For thou art my strength. So the King David is letting them know that the Most High is his strength. You know, not Buddha. You know, not the false image of Christ. Not uh, Amun Ra. You know, not Allah Muhammad, right? He's saying the Most High is his strength, right? And to thine hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord God of truth, right? So he's letting you know that the Most High is the God of truth. All of those other false graven images and false gods and deities, man, that's all confusion. This as it says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 14, you know, the Most High is not the God of confusion. These other gods of the other nations are the gods of confusion, right? But King David here says in verse 5, Into thy hand I commit my spirit. Thou hast redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth, right? I have hated them that regard lying vanities, right? The, the lying vanities are those false gods. You know, those are those false philosophies of the other nations, right? The ones that teaches lawlessness, you know, believing in the false image of Christ, right? Saying that we're under for everlasting grace and we can do whatever we want, right? That's the regarding of lying vanities. But I trust in the Lord, which is the most high, right? So that's what us brothers and sisters of this faith do. We trust in the Most High. You know, we don't lay our trust in Allah and Muhammad and Buddha, right? Taoism, uh, uh, Scientology, believing in the ways of this world, the technology of this world. That's technology. That's Scientology, man. You know, we don't believe in none of that stuff. We believe in the Most High. You know, people walking around talking about they atheists. They don't believe in God at all. That's just foolishness, man. So this right here, this is what King David says. He says, I have hated them that regardeth lying vanities, but I trust in the Lord, which is the most high of the scriptures, right? Okay, I'm going to end this here in the book of 1 John chapter 2. Okay. And 
and I'm going to go down to verse 15. All right, and it reads, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father, which is the most high of the scriptures in heaven, is not in him. Right? So if you love the world and all of the things in the world, all the materialistic things in the world, all of the false gods and graven images and the celebrating of pagan holidays, you know, which is Ash Wednesday today, you know, that the weeping of Tammuz, you know, you're looking forward to um, uh, Easter that's coming up. You know, you're, you're celebrating the Mardi Gras, you know, the celebration of the dead, you know, in Mexico and all of this craziness. You know what I'm saying? You know, all of that stuff is of the world, man. You know, you worship in Buddha, you're practicing yoga and all of this craziness. All of that stuff is of different gods, man. Right. So for the love that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Now, as we already cleared up, you know, pride is one of the seven deadly sins in the book of Proverbs. That's an abomination unto the most high, right? So in the pride of life is not of the father, but of the world. Okay. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. So all of the lust that you have of this world, all the materialistic things, all of the, the graven images, you know, all of the false gods and, and false philosophies, right? All of the false beliefs, right? And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will, right? Which is the law, statutes, commandments, right? The keeping of the laws, you know, the enticing and persuading your people to keep the law, statutes, commandments of the most high putting away that old man and coming back into the old paths, right? That's the doing of the will of God, right? As it says here, but he that doeth the will of the most high abideth forever, right? So if you're a lover of the world and you're a lustful person, you know, you, you're into laxiviousness and, you know, you're, 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 you're just a fornicator, you know, you, you like to drink and get drunk. You like to smoke. You like to uh, put tattoos all over you, and which is a sin to the most high in the book of Leviticus, right? You know, you like to eat all the abominable things. You believe in false deities and false philosophies. You know, those are the lusts of the of the world. You know, that's the luck, that's the lust of the eyes and the flesh, right? So I'm gonna read that again. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God, which is the most high, abideth forever. Okay, so I'm going to end that there, you know, and hopefully that this was edifying. Hopefully that this was enjoyable, you know, hopefully that it wasn't too long for you. But this is part two. I may even come out with a part three. I have plenty of other scriptures, you know, that I can bring out about this subject, about idolatry, right? And how our people are just so far gone into this, you know what I mean? So I might bring out a part three, but this is part two. And just as I said, hopefully that this was edifying and enjoyable. Okay. And to the next time, Shalom.